In this video, we're going to show you how to configure and use the targeted post purchase follow up uh, marketing automation template. And so the way we'll do this is I'm going to show you the preview, what it looks like first, show you where to go to create all of the uh, things you'll need to configure the workflow, and then we can see what it looks like uh, putting it all together. And so the purpose of this workflow is going to be uh, something that's going to be long term and ongoing, uh, you know, workflow that's going to serve you well for a really long time. So that's why it's worth it to go through and do some of the back end things that we need to, do, need to do to configure it, because it starts with someone completing a purchase. And then we're going to be using these three branches to be able to identify and target people based on if this is their first purchase with us. So we could make sure this message, you know, says thanks so much for being, you know, coming on board, joining us as a customer. And then we'll see the next time they purchase, which would be through this path. And it'll make more sense when I go through it and build it with you. This is when we see that the people who already made a first purchase will flow through this path, which means they're no longer first time buyers, they're returning buyers. So we can make sure to address them in that way. And then each time those people come back and purchase from our shop, they'll go through this path where they will just be able to start getting scoring points for returning to our customer, you know, to our store and becoming, you know, more loyal customers. So this is something that's going to work for you for a long time. So we just need to set up a little bit of things in the back end to do that. And so the first thing to do is actually to go to the contacts feature space because we need to create some tags. We're going to be using tags in order to be able to, um, you know, target uh, these types of buyers who come into our shop and purchase from us. And for now, the way to do it, the easiest way, honestly, to create a tag without going into the automation workflow is just find your email address that you use to set up your account. Well, let's see if I can find it. <laughs> uh, I can just do it. I think it's with my email address. So this is the one uh, that I use to create my account. And basically I'm just doing this so I can go to assign tag, but then you see here, create new tag. I need to create some new tags and actually I already have them created the ones that we're going to uh, be using in this example, but this is just to show you how to do it. So create a tag called like, you know, first purchase and it assigns it to you, but then you can take yourself off of being assigned from that tag. Then we can also create another tag that's called uh, repeat purchase. So now we have the two tags that we're going to need. Oh, whoopsie, I messed up. I was searching, create new tag, repeat purchase. There we go. So now the two tags that I need are going to be those basically to identify first time buyers and then returning buyers. So, you, you know, call them whatever you want to, but this is just a, an easy way to create the, those tags. So step one is complete. We created our tags. Now the next thing we need to do is create what's called custom filters so that we can start grouping all of the people who get those tags automatically. And we can go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to go to the search section and then we've got custom filters right here. And that's what we're going to be creating, which are just basically, you can see I have a couple of examples, but these are just, you know, going to basically called segments, you know, a specified group of contacts. So that's where custom filters are located. But to create the custom filter, I just need to go to advanced search, add condition, tag is assigned, and then choose first time buyer. But I can use the one that I used. It was first purchase, I believe. So here, apply. There's no contacts with that yet because you know I just created it, but I could still save as custom filter and then just call it first purchasers, <laughs> something like that. First purchasers. So this custom filter is saved. And so now let me just reload the search page because I need to create one more custom filter that's dedicated for those who are the returning customers who have that tag. So I just need to add the condition tag is assigned. And then it was, I think, repeat, repeat purchase. Save as custom filter. Repeat purchasers. And so now we've got two of the three things done that we need to configure our workflow. We've got the tags, we've got the custom filters. And so now you want to create the messages that you want to be sent whenever people complete purchases with you that you'll use in the workflow. And so you can go to automation messages. So I just went to the automation feature space, automation messages, and you can create the messages that should be sent out as a result of this workflow. So you just go through to choose create draft 
you give it a name. So I can call this first purchase, thank you. Thanks for your purchase, just as an example here. I'm just gonna move through this part a little bit quickly so we don't take too long. And then you'll just choose a template, start from scratch, whatever you need to do. We've got, you know, an example here. And I'll just show you this for the first one. And so of course you'll customize your message, how it should be set up for confirming purchases. This is just samples. If you have your uh, shop integrated, which hopefully you do, uh, to be able to do this most easily, you can automatically, for example, recommend products uh, for future purchases if you want it. That's a great idea for a, for a post purchase. But let's say this is good to go and it's ready to go as a draft. So we can see first purchase. This is it, the one I just created. And so I already have some other messages that I can use in the uh, workflow, but you may want to create two or three types of messages. Because remember, we've got this one that thanks first time buyers. And we have the third, uh, excuse me, the second that is actually going to be, you know, after these first time buyers purchase again. So it could say, thanks for returning to the shop. And then there's going to be a third message that Again, it could be, for example, the one that you send, thanks for coming back, or it could be a dedicated one, thanks for continuing to be a great customer of ours. So you may need two or three uh, messages to be sent as a result of this workflow, it's up to you. So let me go back to the workflow space and create workflow. And now let's choose use template. And just as a little, you know, info, remember you can always preview any templates you need, and then you'll see the dedicated FAQ for you know full instructions uh, for the particular template right there if you need it. So let's configure it now with all of those things we've created. So the first is of course going to be you need to configure the purchase details. So you need to select your integration method, whether that's through JavaScript where you paste the code, that pop-up that just came up is telling you how to do that basically, if you're going to use JavaScript or API, or through one of the e-commerce integrations. Uh, so you do need to configure this, this is an important one. But let's just say for this example, I'm using the JavaScript because I have it set up on my website and it's just the thank you page of the purchase. But definitely recommend you know, making sure you know how exactly you need to be integrating your shop, your you know, purchase page with GetResponse. And then we need to configure this. This is the, what's called, we can see it here, the dynamic segment. And this is where we're gonna be looking for those people who are the first time buyers. And so we can do this choice, use an existing segment, because we created it. And remember, it was called first purchasers. So this is gonna be looking for everybody who has that tag of first purchase. And it'll make more sense in just a moment. Then, I'm gonna go ahead and go through it this way because this is actually the way that's gonna be first time buyers. So just hang with me for a minute. So this is a segment dedicated to first time buyers. This will be our dedicated to our segment of repeat purchasers. And so you can help maybe see now the negative path. So a purchase is made, we're checking. Do they have the first time purchase tag? They do not. Do they have the repeat purchase tag? They do not. That must mean that they are a first time buyer. So we're gonna apply the tag of, you know, first purchase right here that we created. And then we'll send the message that we have and just created the first purchase thank you. So this is the path it goes the first time that someone makes a purchase with you because we're actually applying the tag here of first purchase. And so now let's say, hopefully you've got such a great shop that this person who just purchased for their first time and got this tag, they made another purchase from you. They bought again, let's say, you know, a few days later, a week later. And so now they go through this element here and then we check, do they have the first purchase tag? They do because they received it right here. And so what we're gonna do now is actually remove their first purchase tag because now they're not a first purchase tag. They shouldn't have that any longer. They have come back to our store. And so now we need to choose, again, this will be another one of your uh, messages you've created for this purpose, whether it's, you know, it has a different wording, you know, than this one did, you know, thanks so much for coming back to our store. It's totally up to you, but it needs to be another message. And then we're going to assign that other tag that we created 
remember, repeat purchase or repeat buyer, however you're calling it. So step one, first time buyer, we give them a tag and we send them a message that confirms their purchase and thanks them for you know their purchase. Then they purchase again. So we see they already have this tag that was applied here. We remove that tag because now they're not a first time buyer. And we send them the message, thanks so much for your purchase. And we give them a tag of a repeat purchaser. Then let's say, again, they can't get enough of what you're offering, they purchase again. We see, do they have the first purchase tag? They do not because we removed it here. So now we check, okay, do they have the repeat purchase tag? They do. So we send whatever message you designate here, whether it's the same as this one, if you know the wording works out to be generic, that's fine, or if it's dedicated you know, to something different. So that's why I mentioned earlier, you should create either two or three draft messages to use in this workflow, and it's up to you. And then here we also have a scoring element. So you could actually start scoring uh, your customers if you wanted for all of their repeat purchases. And you could of course apply scores to these sides here if you wanted to start scoring even on the first purchase. That would make total sense as well if you wanna kinda of go above and beyond. You could just add additional scoring elements here and connect them. And then choose how to score their first purchase, their second purchase, and then each subsequent repeat purchase as well. And so then if we say, you know, they've been through all three and then they make another purchase, they're gonna each time they go through the purchase, you know, they purchase again from you the same, uh, you know, subscriber and customer, they're gonna go through this um, middle section again and again for every purchase. So this is, you know, why it's totally worth it to go ahead, set up those tags, set up those custom filters, because once you have this set up, this workflow can continue working for you for, a, you know, a long time and actually really help you segment. It's really important to be able to tag these people because now you're going to be able to find everyone who has a first purchase tag uh, in your uh, account. And maybe if they have that for a long time, you know, they haven't actually purchased from you again. And you can actually try to reach out and target them specifically. Or if they've got the repeat purchase tag, you could start in maybe some amount of score. Maybe they've got a repeat purchase tag and, you know, a score of 50 or something. You could, you know, maybe send them a special offer for being such loyal customers. So this is really helping you really target and personalize your messaging in the post-purchase process, but also helping you to do other segmentation and targeting um, promotions or reach outs uh, in the future apart from the post-purchase communication. And so that's all you need to do to be able to set up a really awesome e-commerce post-purchase strategy.